Now, you just said Nemoodles, and to this day, nobody still knows what the Red Dragonflight actually does, slash sarcasm. I hate to say this, but Alex Straza has a title. And I think that, you know, I think that it kind of illustrates ANR's station as well. Alex Straza does one thing very specifically, and they're not really that subtle about it. She's mommy, yes, but she's the dragon queen. She's the ruler. Ultimately, she's the ruler. That's why it all that's why it all it all comes to her. That's why pretty much anything that they do is either her direct order or someone consulting her before they do it. And I think that that also applies to the Titans when you think about ANR. I think that in a sense everything that they do kind of has to go through ANR in the way that they swore an oath to protect life in that like you know anything they do might have to be given the okay by you know their leader. So I think it's another hint at the station of the life binder being considered a little bit above that of the others sometimes, you know? And maybe a and is just very cunning, but the fact that she was the only one to escape torture from Sargeras is kind of... I think that's kind of sussy. Because it just makes me wonder, like, how was she the only one? How was she the only fucking one? She didn't have to undergo any of the torment. Guys, remember that. All that supposed torment that the Titan Pantheon was enduring over in Antorus, ANR didn't have to experience any of that. It's funny how for Alex Straza, it's the inverse. You're right. And who is the who's the one that's the most responsible for the suffering of Alex Straza? Who is it? It's Deathwing. Of course it's Deathwing. Essentially, the Titan equivalent of Sargeras. <laughs> the flaming and metal bad guy, you know? It's weird how that works. This is another example of a fractal. Yeah, it's a, it's a fractal. It's a, it's a cycle inside of a cycle. It's a repeating theme. And, and that's honestly, guys, that's how I um, have formulated a lot of my hypotheses is... is and I didn't even realize that I was doing it, honestly, was just identifying those similarities of like, well, Pantheon of Gods, Pantheon of Dragons. Yeah, fractals, they're just, they're just repeating themes. And if you can learn to identify repeating themes, you can learn to identify through con comparing and contrasting, like, you, like we learned to in elementary school, you know, comparing and contrasting, is, is not that difficult when you're able to recognize similarities between the Council of Dragons and the Council of Titans. Those mean something. They absolutely mean something, especially when we're talking about the fact that they are direct descendants of the influence of the Titans. Now, that is to say that the Titans may not have directly created those proto-drakes as they were before their empowerment, but um, they are part of their legacy now. So, uh... You know, and I think that that's also part of why I can be a little sensitive on the topic of good and evil, because I think that there are many creatures and people in the game, in the World of Warcraft universe, that are just, they're acting as a consequence of their upbringing and of their surroundings. And I think that one of the things that humans strive for uh, and what they think sets them apart in nature from other animals is the ability to overcome our base instincts. Just because you're born of a certain influence or whatever, you know, I think that it's still a question for humanity to go, well, it's about humans' will to overcome and look past, you know, what is their supposed nature because humans are the only creatures that are able to do that. Um, and so... I think that that's part of why mortals in, in WoW are so malleable. They can go to any force, you know, they're, they're, they're one of those things that is like free willed to the point of 
like they they're they're they can they can do basically anything um so it's about breaking the cycles yeah you're right jay it's about breaking the cycles that we're kind of born into and i think that that is a big philosophical view that you can transport to real life you know breaking cycles of poverty breaking cycles of abuse breaking cycles of of uh of of uh crime those kinds of things right like how do we become better than our parents and raise our children to be better than us that's the that's kind of like i think one of the big the big themes of like what do we do to leave the world like better than we found it uh so yeah anyway i that's all deep and philosophical and whatnot but i think that that the things said in World of Warcraft extend in value beyond the game universe, because I think that games are especially effective medium for tackling philosophical concepts. And I and let me tell you, Outer Wilds is a proof of that. Um, Final Fantasy XIV is proof of it. And in, in some ways, World of Warcraft is proof of that. Um, and so that's, and I've said this before, that's part of why I love the World of Warcraft story and I love stories and games in general so much is because they take what is so painfully real and hard to process sometimes and make it more digestible. But when you have a game like WoW where the stakes are really high and we're talking about a conflict that can decide the fate of the entire universe, it's hard for me to not get invested and get angry and get passionate because I think that I am projecting a little bit of like, if people can't see it in this game, can they, are they capable of it in real life? You know, and I think, I think sometimes it just kind of freaks me out. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>